Hello, welcome back to GT Scale Modeling video. So today I am proud, I guess, or happy to uh, show you the final finished model of my A10C from Italeri. Uh, so obviously I finished, as you can see, and yeah, I'm overall I'm happy with it and pleased with it. I feel that I've done a, a good job on it. Especially happy with how I would how I managed to blend in the various resin parts with the kit parts, which from previous personal experience and I'm sure some of you might know is not always the easiest thing, even if the resin parts are designed for that kit. If you were to really look with a microscope in some of those areas you'd find that it's not perfect. However it's a lot better than I assumed it might be and therefore on a personal level I'm happy with the outcome of that. As I said overall I'm happy with it. There's a few things as usual I'm less happy with. However there are things that will kind of go into the the bank of things to do differently next time. So uh, if you haven't seen my other videos um, you might be wondering why I have a, an A10 painted in World War II olive drab with grey and D-Day stripes on it. This was effectively, uh, I was going to paint this kit just as the normal sort of two-tone grey A10 and then uh, for my Ian CW, CW modelling, if you haven't seen his work on Facebook um, on Facebook or on, on YouTube, go and check it out. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. He showed me a picture of this aircraft and basically said that I should do it. And so, yeah, the, the challenge was set. Uh, initially, I was kind of like, okay, that's fair enough. Not too difficult a paint job, but how do I go about doing the specific markings, which you see here. Uh, I was like, I'm not going to be able to hand paint those. However, a quick look around showed that uh, actually there was an aftermarket set of uh, decals for this kit, for this particular, well for the kit, but also for the for the particular aircraft. That aircraft being a 100th anniversary uh, paint scheme for the 107th Fighter Squadron, uh, which are part of the Michigan Air National Guard now. But in the Second World War, flew a very a variety of aircraft over the over the years. So they painted one up to represent the scheme carried by the aircraft uh, during World War Two. Now, obviously, the during World War Two didn't have the big Red Devils on it, but the Fighter Squadron's nickname is the Red Devils, so that's why there was a big stylized devil marking on the side of this aircraft. Uh, at the start of this video, you might have seen some. Oh well, at the end. But after this bit, I'll put some of the reference pictures I was using as inspiration so you can see what it should look like. Uh, I'm happy enough, got it pretty close. I'm pretty happy with the masking on the wings here. That was just done by cutting some masking tape into a wavy line. Uh, that was pretty good. Quite happy with how that turned out. Happy with how the D Day stripes turned out. These are hand painted. Well, I say hand painted, they're painted, not they're not uh, decals, they weren't part of the they weren't part of the decal set um, but all the other markings were so the kit itself went together pretty well it's an artillery kit but seems to be seems to be quite a good kit uh, relatively decent level of detail some recessed rivets in place he's not entirely covered with them but it's okay recessed panel lines not too deep not too trench like so uh, general fit was good, um, didn't really have much in the way of filler work to do, so yeah, nice, nice kind of pleasant, pleasant build. Some alterations I made just to the kit, um, you may not really see it, but you'll see the photos, and the um, Avenger can, I drilled out all the holes, uh, I didn't bother getting the brass master or RB models one whichever it is um, for that I just drilled out all the holes and even that and painted it with some uh, AK Extreme Metals and I think it's turned out quite quite well um, so yeah happy with that 
Um, I'm quite happy with how the crew access ladder's turned out. That's just with a bit of a black wash on it, and it's kind of given it quite a good sort of oily look. So that's quite simple, but actually it's given it really quite a good look. Um, the weapon stores are entirely fictional. Um, the actual aircraft didn't fly with any stores other than a, I think a, a belly tank maybe at some point, at least in the pictures I found. So this is just a kind of a made up loadout um, from some of the kit parts and some parts I think I'd salvaged from an older a tank kit I had or some spares in the box. So the uh, Sniper ATP pod. I know that A10s now carry the Lightning 2 pods. Don't know if they ever actually carried Sniper ATPs. I don't have any Lightning 2s, so you know, that went on there. A couple of uh, Mavericks, uh, big JDAM, and there's also a couple of smaller JDAMs on the belly stations. There was one more, but uh, it broke off when I left it in the hands of somebody and it got broke. So uh, they also the real one of these didn't have the paved penny pod on. Presumably they're possibly replaced by some of the functions of the lightning pods. I'm not entirely sure about that so don't quote me on it. But I'd already put it on the kit by the time I decided to do this aircraft so it, you know, I was kind of just happy to leave it as is. So there are some inaccuracies I guess you could argue to the real one. However it's my version and I'm happy enough with it. Uh, I recently entered this into the staff category for my um, Air Cadet Wing modelling competition and I'm not actually sure which one which because I also entered my SU-27 however I entered both and they both went in the same category and one got a gold and one got a silver so kind of happy with that. I also entered my Sherman Firefly diorama and it won a, it won a gold as well so three models entered and three decent medals. I don't build for competition, I do it partly to help support the, I enter stuff to help support the competition, the modelling in Air Cadet Squadron seems to be kind of slightly, it wasn't too bad this year I think, but uh, I like to just uh, enter some stuff just to help bulk up the numbers and um, you know show participation, so to get something out of it was kind of nice, So, but not necessarily the, the aim, so that's good. Um, so, yeah, the one thing I'm less happy about, the sort of mottling I've done on the surface has all kind of been lost under layers of varnish and things, so it looks fairly flat. However, not really the end of the world. Uh, as I said, it is an anniversary skinned aircraft, so it's very clean and very fresh in real life, and even things like the panel lines, there's not much dirt between them because it's, you know, it's, it's a nice new paint coat and it's kept clean for fly pasts and shows and whatever so I'm not really too fussed by that so um, and that's why it's got a slight satin sheen to it rather than being sort of full matte as the, maybe the grey ones would be um, so yeah you may notice that the fueling port is open the this is a resin nacelle and it does have the door however it's been lost because as I said I'd left it for entry into this competition but I wasn't there for the day so I had to trust a colleague to drop this into the competition for me and retrieve it back and it came back um, with a few injuries. Um, the canopy was off, one of the um, one of the bombs on the belly had fallen off and two of its fins had somehow managed to get broken so that's why I haven't put that back on, although you can't see unless you look underneath. And the cover for the nacelle here had broken off because I had it in the open position. Minor things are just a little annoying because I literally just finished it and then you know somebody just kind of clumsily picked it up from underneath and it popped some bits off and uh, yeah no idea where that's going. Anyway, so this is how it looks. Um, the stripes I had to just go with originally on the wings here and on the real reference aircraft the stripes actually go from here outwards. To, to this location, but when I tried to do that, that distance divided by the five stripes that needs to be is something like 8.5 millimeters. I only have 10 and 6 millimeter tape, and when I tried to cut some 10 millimeter tape to the right width, it didn't work. I didn't get even stripes, so I repainted over them, and even now you can see they're not quite 
perfect. This one looks to be narrower at the front than it is at the back, um, which I actually hadn't noticed till now. The black ones are fairly even, and these two white ones are fairly even. I think these ones are all not too bad at all. And the ones on the engines, I'm quite pleased with. They were a little bit easier to do. So I just went with 6mm tape here. Um, so yeah, okay, they might not be overly accurate in true dimension, but it was easier for me to do, and I think overall it still looks um, pretty good. Decals here, these red devil decals, believe it or not, they were one single piece, which was a little bit of a nightmare to um, put on, especially since I had to cut them sort of around some vents here, which was not the easiest thing, and they're a little bit rough around there. If you look closely, I tried to touch up with some red paint match to the colour, which at least at a distance, so for here, probably doesn't look too bad. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy. I've tried my best to get them lined up equally on top, although I think actually one sits very slightly further forward than the one on the other side. But again, it's not too bad, and considering the size of them and uh, whatever else, I'm kind of happy I even got them on there and didn't completely destroy them. Especially since this one, I totally didn't realise until I put it on that, of course, some of it would be on the other side of this open panel here. So I had to lay this decal across here, wait for it to dry, and then trim it around the same on, the same on this bit here, um, so that we got some of it here, so it was all in the right place, but then the representative parts um, missing. In fact, you can still see they're actually stuck on my mat here <laughs> and here. Um, so the other side was fine though. So that's it. We'll put some pictures at the end. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.